Night time in Narva, the Estonian city on the border with Russia, the army preparing for a military parade. Since the events in Ukraine, the Estonian government has pushed for an increased NATO presence in the northeast of the country. This small Baltic Republic is nervous. Politicians and citizens are starting to ask some uncomfortable questions. Will the Kremlin try to destabilize Estonia too? And will the country's large Russian minority remain loyal to Estonia? Russian-speaking Lieutenant Nikolai Predbanikov outlines what's being done to encourage the integration of Russian speakers into the Estonian army. We organize special language training for those who struggle with Estonian. In addition, there are military personnel who understand both Russian and Estonian, and they're able to translate specific military terms when necessary. So the crucial question is this, are Russian speakers in the Estonian armed forces ready to defend their country against potential aggression from the east? As far as I'm concerned, it's not about the nationality or ethnicity of the enemy. Whoever brings the sword will fall by the sword. The fear among some is that guided by Moscow, little green men, that's to say armed fighters with no insignia, will slip over the border into Estonia, just as they did in Crimea. Civil society is worried. Russian speakers included, who make up around a quarter of the population. Ivan drafted an open letter signed by numerous Estonian Russian speakers of all political shades. The purpose of the memorandum is to send a message that we Russian speakers living in Estonia don't want to see those famous little green men come here like they did in Ukraine, in Crimea. People here want to live in an independent Estonia, not some kind of new Russia. Estonia plans to increase its use of Russian language media to communicate with the public, says Ilma Rag. As a filmmaker, he worked with the famous French actor Jean Moreau. Now he supports the Estonian government in its efforts to counter foreign media manipulation. We are concerned of uh, hostile information operations how to counter uh, Russian propaganda. Uh, we, we think that the first step should be the raising awareness in order to uh, really uh, recognize immediately uh, straightforward lies. Oleg and Tatyana are both native Russian speakers. Among their friends, only very few would prefer to live under the rule of the Kremlin, they say. In Narva, it's only a few elderly people who'd like to join the Russian Federation. People who are now in their 50s or older lived most of their life in the Soviet Union, and that's why they're more used to that way of life than me. I'm probably half Estonian now. I was born here in Narva. I grew up here. While their son David took Estonian citizenship at birth, his parents still have grey-coloured alien passports. Being busy with children and work, they never got round to learning Estonian very well, nor preparing properly for the citizenship exam. If the government wants more people to get Estonian passports, if they want more Estonian citizens, they need to simplify the citizenship exams. David gets good grades. In Narva, 90% of people are Russian speakers. And there are many Russian schools where 60% of classes are taught in Estonian and 40% in Russian. Politicians are now talking about introducing Estonian earlier at kindergarten level. David's parents support the idea and would like to see more native Estonian language teachers in Narva. They want their kids to become truly bilingual and not be regarded as aliens. Today they're going to a military show in Narva. There, David and his parents find Estonian, British, Dutch and US forces side by side. Estonia's NATO membership means most Russian speakers rule out a Ukrainian-style scenario. Most, that is, but not all. If the government were to limit the use of Russian language by law, then anything could happen. No, 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 it's not possible. It couldn't be allowed to happen. We are all peaceful people. That is, because we live here together in peace. 
People who remain here now are normal, loyal citizens who were born here and who love Estonia as much as any Estonians, even if they're ethnic Russians. Narva's Russian speakers gather to watch the military parade in honour of Estonia's independence. Many carry Estonian flags. It seems the inhabitants of Narva are loyal to Estonia and that there are no separatist tendencies today. The elections just a few days ago confirmed the country's pro-NATO orientation. But Narva's in a difficult position. Given the tense geopolitical situation, some foreign investors have put their business plans on hold. Narva's twinned with Donetsk in eastern Ukraine. Recently, the council received a letter from the pro-Russian rebels. What they proposed us to do uh, was to um, provide support and uh, claim that the Ukrainian government is, uh, is corrupted and, and uh, crime committing. Uh, of course, uh, as this letter was, uh, had a letterhead of uh, Donetsk uh, People's Republic, we simply could not um, respond. Mikhail distributes Let's Speak Russian stickers. The native Russian speaker left Estonia 14 years ago to pursue his career as a financial controller. Based in Belgium, he visits his home country every two months, not just to meet friends, but also to check on product labels. He manages a mailbox for complaints from Russian speakers and lobbies for Russian to be included in court proceedings, hospitals, schools and shops. Recently, Estonia passed a new law on product labelling rules, but he says there's further to go. I think the problem is that with some products, there are ingredients that could be harmful. For instance, if you suffer from allergies, it's important that all consumers have all the necessary information in their own language, meaning Russian speakers need information in the Russian language. 16-year-old Russian speaker Artur has made some Estonian-speaking friends in the internet gaming community. The family lives in welfare housing. Being a single mother of four, Olga makes a living as a cleaning lady. She knows a lot of ethnic Russians and fears that one day there could be problems in Narva. Yes, there is such a fear that one day Russians might rebel or push for riots, discontent or something like that. Everyone has his own opinion on that and me, as a mother, I fear for my family. I would say that in Narva, an estimated 30% of Russian speakers would be glad to join Russia. The Avenue Club is run by Vladimir Cherdakov, the Russian-speaking well-known rock singer says Estonian politicians should do more to ease tensions by paying more attention to Narva continually, not just at election time. Tuki-tuki-chu, para-para-mba.